Hi students and welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian and I'm streaming to you from beautiful Victoria here on the west coast of Canada. I hope everybody is having a fantastic week so far, staying healthy, staying strong and productive. In this class everyone, we are looking at IELTS task 2 writing, a sample question that was sent to us by one of our students and specifically we will focus on how to plan for a band 9 essay. Planning is essential to get those higher band scores so I will show you the steps for that today. Uh, welcome uh, David, thank you for the belated happy birthday wishes. In English when you say happy birthday like one or two days after or a couple days after we say belated, belated birthday wishes. So thank you for that. Uh, David, I appreciate your feedback. Good morning, Sammy. Good to have our members in the class. Uh, this lesson, students, is brought to you by aehelp.com for academic IELTS success. Check us out there. We have lots of examples for task two essay writing. You can also submit uh, your writing for proofreading, editing, feedback and a score estimate. For the general IELTS, visit us at gieltshelp.com. That's generalieltshelp.com. Uh, task 2 essay, what we're looking at today, is basically the same in general and academic IELTS. There's very, very little difference, if any, so this will be useful regardless of whether you're doing the general or the academic uh, version. Welcome Nick Hill, Rajveer and Rashika and Kim, uh, Ken, sorry, into uh, the class. All right, while we wait for a few more of your fellow members, uh, our websites look like this. This is our Academic IELTS website with the blue background. You can click this big red button here to join our premium package. It's a one-time payment for lifetime access. You get access to the app for your mobile as well. Uh, we are an official British Council IELTS Registration Center certified agents. You can ask us questions anytime. Uh, we are world leaders when it comes to IELTS test preparation. This is our general IELTS website with the green background. You can click that big red button to join us there. All right, students, if you have any questions, send me an email to adrian at aehelp.com. Also, make sure to download and link our apps to your web accounts. Academic IELTS Help app will link to aehelp.com and the General IELTS Help app in your app store will link to gieltshelp.com. Good morning, June. All right, listening to the uh, listening to the class in your car today. Uh, that's okay, June. Just make sure that you're also paying uh, careful attention to the road as well. All right. So um, yeah, we've got a reading class coming up after this one, where everybody will be able to join the class. And we've got more classes tomorrow and Saturday. Now let's take a look at today's task two question again. As I mentioned, uh, this was sent to us uh, by a fellow student. I can't ex remember exactly who it was, but they were pretty excited to have this question. Oh, uh, yeah, June, I think it was maybe you who sent this uh, question. And you mentioned that uh, this question was um, the actual question in China uh, for IELTS uh, maybe like a week ago or something like that. So uh, this was the actual task to from the IELTS exam. Yeah, June, there you go. June says, I sent it. Okay. Yeah, so here it is, June. Uh, thank you for sending this request. And uh, yeah, it was, it was a, an exam question not so long ago. So it's a good one to take a look at. Okay, so here we go. First step, of course, read the question very, very, very carefully. You have to write on topic. Content is very, very important for band six, seven, eight, nine essays. So content is extremely important. Um, IELTS task two writing. 
you should spend about 40 minutes on this task. The education of young people is the main priority in many countries around the world. Some people believe that educating adults who cannot read or write is essential for society and more funding should be made available for it. Do you agree or disagree? Uh, write at least 250 words. Okay, so uh, quite an interesting question, certainly. Uh, and to make sure that we understand this question, we need to paraphrase it. So paraphrasing the question is essential to understanding it. Now, paraphrasing alone is not an introduction and uh, it's not necessarily a part of your introduction. It can be, but it not necessarily will be. Uh, introductory paragraphs in the IELTS that just paraphrase the question and say this essay will discuss this topic usually do not get higher than band 6, 6.5, even if they're written perfectly. But let's paraphrase this to make sure um, that um, we understand it clearly, okay? So I'm going to do that. You do the same, and then we'll compare. Uh, lots of potential for synonyms here, okay? So... All right, um, so there you have it. There's my paraphrase. I'm curious what you will come up with. So uh, the education of young people, I paraphrase that as teaching youth, okay? So uh, be concise. If you can paraphrase the question in a more concise way, that is fantastic, okay? So the education of young people, teaching youth is the main priority is of utmost importance, is the main priority, it's the number one job, is of utmost importance, it's the number one importance. So again, some uh, paraphrasing there. Uh, in many countries around the world, for most nations around the globe, okay? So notice that here, my first sentence, teaching youth is of utmost importance for most nations around the globe, says exactly the same as the education of young people is the main priority in many countries around the world, uh, just with completely different words, all right? I think the only words that are the same are around the... Okay, and then um, some people believe, so I wrote that as nevertheless, because it's kind of a contrast here. So I'm recognizing this hidden contrast. So nevertheless, so even though this is the main priority, right? Some people believe that educating adults who cannot read or write is essential for society. Now, people who cannot read or write are called illiterate, okay? Literacy is the skill of reading and writing. That's called literacy. So people who cannot read or write are called 
illiterate. They're not able to read or write. So that kind of vocabulary is crucial for those higher band scores, okay? Um, and this kind of an essay. So uh, is essential for society and more funding should be made available for it. So instead of funding, another nice word uh, that I use is budget. So more budget should be given uh, for this. And then do you agree or disagree? So do you believe the same or not? Okay. So the full paraphrase is, uh, teaching youth is of utmost importance for most nations around the globe. Nevertheless, certain individuals ascertain that instructing illiterate adults on reading and writing is vital for society, and there should be a budget given for this. Uh, do you believe the same or not? Okay, um, so let's see what kind of paraphrasing you've come up with. And then we'll go from there. Uh, so Sammy says the education of young individuals is uh, of top importance in several nations across the globe. Uh, top mandatory, Sammy, doesn't make sense. Okay, so top mandatory, they're no good together. Um, so mandatory means it has to be done, but it doesn't make sense. It's not a choice in that case, okay? Uh, certain citizens think that educating adults who cannot read and write is important for the community. Okay, good, Sammy. And more investment must be provided for this. Do you approve or disprove? Rajveer says, nations around the globe are paying more attention to educating youngsters. Some individuals ascertain that promoting literacy among adults is vital for the community and more taxpayers' money should be made available for it. Do you support or disprove it? Okay. Good, Rajveer. Uh, Nick Hill says, uh, the teaching of the youth is uh, significant in most uh, nations globally. However, certain individuals ascertain that giving knowledge to illiterate adults who cannot read and write is imperative for the community and scholarships ought to be provided for them. Do you believe this or not? Okay, Nick Hill, um, it's not bad. I don't think we're talking about scholarships necessarily. I do get that um, uh, we are talking about giving them money, but scholarships is a bit more specific than just funding. Okay, so careful with that. That's a little bit um, too narrow. Okay. Devon writes, uh, the literacy rate of youth is necessary for many nations worldwide. Uh, some people support that educating adults is imperative and financial support must be uh, entitled. Okay, I like that last part, Devonch. Uh, do you support this argument or not? All right, um, good, good. I really like that last part, Devonch. That's nice. Okay, so now we have to identify the topic. So what are we talking about here? Okay, uh, what is the topic of this question? So if somebody looked at you and said, so what are we talking about? What's the main idea? What are we actually discussing? What would you say in a concise way as possible? This is what you have to practice. This is a skill that's practiced to the end of time, to the end of university. Um, Paulo Rees says it's about educating adults is the topic. I don't think it's just about educating adults. Nick Hill says topic is educating illiterate adults. Um, I don't think that that's just it, Nick Hill. I think that's partial. So both uh, you and Paulo have only a part of the topic. Okay, uh, Rajveer says spending money on education is the topic. That's the other half, Rajveer. So I think if we uh, combine uh, yours with Nick Hill and Paulo, then we have um, the full, uh, topic. So Sammy says educating illiterate adults should be compulsory. Um, I think the topic here is, um, 
uh, teaching literacy to adults. Um, uh, let me go back here. Um, we're talking about public funds for teaching literacy to adults. Okay. That's what we're talking about. Would you agree that again, if we read this question, so teaching youth is of the, of utmost importance for most nations around the globe. Nevertheless, certain individuals ascertain that instructing illiterate adults on reading and writing is vital for society and there should be a budget given for this. Do you believe the same or not? Okay. This first sentence is a bit confusing. I don't personally like uh, this style of question um, for people because I think it's a little bit confusing. But this first sentence, the teaching youth is of utmost importance for most nations around the globe. It's more of just some background information or contextual information. But the actual question is more here okay nevertheless certain individuals ascertain that instructing illiterate adults on reading and writing is vital for society and there should be a budget uh, given for this okay so we're talking about public funds for teaching literacy to adults okay that's the topic here okay so uh, we have to be careful because if you're going to talk about simply public funds for teaching, it's going to be considered as too general by the IELTS examiners and it becomes virtually impossible to get into those band eight, band nine um, scores. So Sammy says, uh, yeah, even I felt the first sentence is a bit necessary. Um, why do you think they give you that first sentence? So what's, what's, the, um, what's the purpose of it? The reason, there is a reason, um, it's, it's to give you context, obviously. Um, the reason they give you that first sentence is to have you think about the fact that, you know, money can go to many different places in society and even within the world of pedagogy, education, it can uh, be spent on children or in other ways, okay? Yeah, Paulo's saying uh, the reason for this first sentence is so that we understand the importance of the question. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Pavan says it's for the examiners to make us confused or puzzle us. It's not Pavan, it's to give you context, okay? It's to give you context of education. Um, so the topic here is public funds for teaching literacy to adults. Okay, um, so the controlling idea. And by the way, just a little foreshadow, I will be releasing an HD video on the channel um, within the next month where I'm interviewing a very famous uh, IELTS examiner who officially marked thousands of task two essays. And some of the advice that I'm giving you today uh, is exactly what we talk about in the interview on what's needed for these high uh, band essays. So, okay. Uh, so the controlling idea here is, is it a wise investment by society to fund uh, literacy education, uh, adult literacy education, let's keep it simple, um, or not. Okay, so that's kind of the controlling idea. So is it a good investment of public funds, of taxpayer money, or is it a bad investment? Is it better to put that money into uh, educating youth, uh, for example, okay? All right, so that's where we're going with this. Okay, um, let's get into a bit more planning. So in the actual officials IELTS exam, what you're doing is you're doing this quickly. Uh, a lot of this you're doing in your mind, okay? So um, you can do the paraphrasing on paper and then identifying the topic, the controlling idea, 
and doing some critical thinking about these, which means thinking about the what, thinking about the why, thinking about the how. Uh, that's happening mostly in your head, okay? So the question that I wanna ask here is what are public funds to teach literacy to adults, okay? So what is that? What do you think? So how would you interpret that? It's very, very important to go through these steps. And as I mentioned, this famous person, I don't want to tell you who it is just yet, but this famous person who I interviewed, they said that, yeah, that is absolutely the biggest missing element from high band essays uh, that... Uh, where students are getting lower band scores in their writing is their planning. Uh, they might have good vocabulary, they might have good grammar, but there's not a lot of planning in their response. And they are looking for quality information, especially in academic task twos, okay? Yeah, Paulo, the controlling idea is the, the core of the question. That's another way to look at it, Paulo, absolutely. So it's what are we trying to discuss or discover in connection to the topic? So the topic is public funds for teaching literacy to adults. And what are we trying to discover or understand in connection to this topic? That's the controlling idea. And what we're trying to understand here is should societies spend money public funds on this endeavor, or should we invest it elsewhere, right? It, public funds are limited, so we don't have an unlimited supply of public funding. We wish we did, but we don't, so we have to pick and choose what is the best investment of that, okay? All right, um, so again, the first critical thought here is what are public funds to teach literacy to adults, okay? So what, what would that be, okay? Now, I think it was Rajveer who said taxpayer money. Um, that's one, anything else? So money from the government, okay? Uh, but it's not just taxpayer money. Yeah, very good, Ken. So Ken Fum says, how about money that's donated, like uh, money from charities? Absolutely, and those exist. So this is where you want to be visual and think about the real world. And I bet most of you uh, know that there are charities that take donations to help um, adults uh, with literacy, okay? So taxes and donations, taxpayer money and donations, charities. Absolutely. Those are also public funds coming from uh, people. Okay. Um, so taxpayer money, donations, charities collected for uh, adult literacy programs. Okay. Very good. Now, again, at home, so during the exam, you're doing this in your head, but at home, you're doing exactly what we're doing in the class. So you're writing this down step by step. It's very, very important, okay? All right, um, so what's the next question? What's the next logical question here, okay? Devon says it's non-government organization. Yeah, it's still public funds, okay? So it's still public, charities are still public funds. It's still coming from the public. So it doesn't necessarily have to be the government in all cases, okay? Pavan says the next question is why. And you're correct, Pavan. However, Pavan, you want to ask the full question. Always search for the full question, not just one word question. So why what, okay? Okay, Nick Hill says, why is it important to collect public funds for adult literacy programs? Yeah, absolutely. So, okay. 
And here, I'll show you a little trick um, so that you can have better ideas, okay? The quality of your ideas will have a huge impact on your band score from six to nine, okay? Uh, keep that in mind, so it will have a huge impact. So why is it important to use public funds for adult literacy programs? Um, the opposite question, if you can kind of think of the opposite question, that can sometimes help you come up with some really good ideas. Like instead of using personal funds, right? Okay, so why would it be important to use public funds for adult literacy programs instead of using personal funds? Okay, um, what do you think? Okay, why, why use the money of uh, society to help um, adult men and women uh, learn to read and write? What's, what's the logic there? So why, would we, why wouldn't we just say, hey, uh, John, I know you can't read, but uh, no big deal. Reach into your pocket take out some money, hire a private tutor, and uh, get that tutor to teach you how to read. So why, why not say that to John? Why say, hey, John, don't worry about it. We've got um, a program set up for you. You just need to show up on Monday, Tuesday evenings for three hours each day, and you're going to learn to read and write, okay? So why do it that way, okay? Yeah, DBARAC, absolutely. So why should governments use public funds, okay? Okay, so Rajveer says impoverished adults cannot spend money on education. Okay, Rajveer, good. Um, you're, you have the right idea. Make sure to express the full idea, okay? So um, Okay, as we know, right, uh, many illiterate adults do not have money to spend on education and coming up with this idea is very important because we start to realize an essential part of this question is that reading and writing is needed to make money, right? So most of the jobs in the world, if not all, virtually, arguably, almost all, jobs in the world uh, require uh, people to be literate. So even if you're working on a farm uh, building a fence, uh, you still will have to read some of the instructions on how to pour concrete or how to use a certain tool for building that fence. So uh, in the world today, it's extremely difficult to make money without the ability to read and write, okay? So uh, it's uh, very true that the illiterate um, adult uh, population is arguably also the impoverished uh, part of society. So um, many illiterate adults do not have enough money to spend on education, so they need funding, right? So they need uh, social assistance. Okay, good. Now, I'm going to be a little bit quicker here on the how question. You should think about this. So how can the public spend um, money to improve adult literacy? That should be your next question. Okay, I'm going to pick up a little bit of pace here with this one. So uh, I'm giving you the question, but again, thinking about these questions and the full sentence questions are very important, okay? So how can the public spend money to improve adult education, okay? Um, by hiring teachers, establishing uh, schools and programs, uh, night classes for adult literacy, 
Okay, so this is where you do a lot of visualization. Okay, so visualize, visualize how uh, society can collect money from uh, charities, how it can use this taxpayer money and establish different kinds of programs with teachers, with tutors, um, starting night classes for adults, for after work, uh, so that they can improve their literacy, they can uh, learn to read and write, okay? So that's how this would happen. Okay, uh, so now we have a fairly good idea of the topic, okay? And uh, now we need to kind of do the same critical thinking for the controlling idea. And so what would be the question that I would ask here for the controlling idea? Okay. So what's my next question? This is a very important question here. So we've discussed the topic. We have an understanding of um, teaching uh, or investing funds uh, for teaching literacy to adults. Uh, what's the question with the controlling idea here? Okay. Uh, Sammy says for the previous one, providing study materials. Absolutely. Yeah. So textbooks and such as well. Okay. So what's my next question? Because of course I have to keep in mind the original task two question here. Uh, which is this, do you believe the same or not? Or sh sorry, I should say the very original one is, do you agree or disagree? And I have to make a decision here because it's or disagree. So I don't want to say both agree and disagree, right? And we'll talk about that in a minute, why I cannot agree and disagree, okay? So, and I can't, obviously I can't do it for this question. So what's my next question here for the controlling idea? Okay, I'm gonna start writing and let's see if you come up with the same. Oh, look at that. Nick Hill almost verbatim uh, right off the top, top. So I wrote, what are the benefits of using public funds to teach literacy to adults? Uh, Nick Hill says, what are the benefits and deficits of investing funds by teaching um, uh, by society for teaching adult literacy? Okay, very good, Nick Hill. Now, Nick Hill, uh, I would split those into two questions. Okay, so one are what are the benefits? And the other question, what are the negatives? If you try to think of too many ideas, especially uh, contradicting ideas at the same time, um, it might get a little bit tricky. So I would go with the benefits first, okay? And once I've thought about that, Rajvir, then I can figure out if I agree or disagree, okay? Uh, Sammy says, what are the reasons I should agree? Uh, that's okay, Sammy, but Nick Hill has the better wording. So the better wording is, what are the benefits of um, this? Now, you can't choose both sides, okay? So keep this in mind. I'm going to make this very clear for you. So you cannot choose both sides for this question because it does not make logical sense. And what I mean by that is society cannot both give and not give funds for uh, adult literacy education. Do you, do you get that? Is that clear? So if you were like, oh, this is an agree or disagree essay, and I'm going to say I partially agree, or I'm going to say, oh, I both agree or disagree, you're going to set yourself up for failure because you're creating an argument that's fundamentally flawed. You can't possibly say to a government agency like the Ministry of Education that, yes, you should give money to fund adult education. Oh, but by the way, you shouldn't give money to fund adult education because then the Minister of Education is going to look at you as the advisor and they're going to say, 
so do you want me to give money or not give money, right? Um, and if you can't give a clear answer, you're fired, all right? So, <clears throat> yeah, exactly, Sammy. So don't sit on the fence. So for this question, you have to either say yes, funds should be given, or no, funds should not be given, right? Okay. Uh, yeah, Apollo, you definitely have paper that you can use for taking notes in the computer-based exam, and you can even write it into uh, the document and then erase it at the end, okay? Uh, Fudhill, it depends on the question, whether or not you can write I or you. If it's asking for your personal opinion, then yes, you can. If it's not, then you shouldn't. Okay. All right. So let's get back to this question here. So firstly, um, what are the benefits of using public funds to teach literacy to adults? Now, here, again, don't overthink it, okay? Education is arguably one of the best ways to invest money for any society. So money invests, um, sorry, society invests money into healthcare uh, and into a lot of other sectors. And most people will put forward the argument that education is almost always the best form of investment. So starting with um, what are the benefits of using public funds to teach literacy to adults, uh, that will be the right question to ask. So Rajvir says better job opportunities and life quality for individuals. Okay, so... Okay, so that would be a good answer, sure. Okay, what else? So if we teach adults to be literate who cannot read and write, um, then uh, that will certainly create more job opportunities for those individuals, and it will most likely lead for an improvement um, for the quality of life of individuals. Um, what else? There's more, so keep your thinking broad, okay? Just imagine, I cannot read, I cannot write, I learn to read and write, I get a good job, and now I'm doing what? Okay, Sri, very good, so reduces poverty. Okay, so I'm just going to simply say it reduces poverty, which arguably will also reduce crime rates and will reduce money that's invested for supporting the impoverished, right? So societies are also strained by giving food, water, etc. to people who are in poverty, right? Okay, uh, Nick Hill, very good. So Nick Hill says it will lead to an improvement in the economy and society overall, right? So, yeah. So when people learn to read and write and they get a better job, then they're able to control to society, thereby improving the overall economy of uh, society as well. Okay, all right. So now we could ask the question, we could ask the question, what are the deficits? of using public funds to teach literacy to adults, okay? Um, but I think that most of us at this point would recognize that, hey, you know, yeah, okay, people should learn to read and write when they're kids, if given the opportunity, but not everybody has that opportunity. And most adults who cannot read and write probably 
uh, aren't in that situation because they didn't want to learn to read and write. It's usually the parents' responsibility and society's responsibility to teach young children. So it's probably not because they're like, hey, I don't ever want to learn to read and write and I'm going to grow up without reading and writing. Um, it's just the way that it happened. It's kind of a legacy of, um, of an older social system. Uh, so by this point, I think most of us would realize that, okay, yeah, uh, it's probably not a bad idea for society to give money uh, for this endeavor, for this project, um, because we're going to benefit. So um, what's the thesis here? So who's benefiting? Okay. This is my next question here. Let me ask this one. So So who is benefiting from allocating public funds? Okay, keep this in mind. And once you've gone through this and once you've had this kind of critical thinking and you're doing this quickly, this is three, four minutes of your 40 minutes for task two. So this happens. Yeah, very good, Rajvir. So Rajvir says both the individual and society benefits from teaching adult literacy. Very good, Sammy. Okay. And that is great, right? So if we have a situation where both the individual and society benefit from investment, that is great ROI. ROI for all of you who are into business means return on investment, okay? So arguably that is a fantastic return on investment to have both the individual and society benefit from the investment of that money. Okay, so now we can create a very powerful thesis, okay? So that's your next step is write a thesis statement and again, with that expert who I had this interview with a couple of weeks ago that we're going to make a nice uh, HD video for our YouTube channel um, uh, from, uh, he, he said that, yeah, the thesis statement is extremely important. And yes, it is a good idea to have a hook in your introduction, even though it's not necessary. For the high band essays, examiners like to see a hook. He was always looking for the hook. He marked thousands of essays, official IELTS essays over the past few years. And he said for those high band essays, he was looking for the hook and he was always looking for a very solid, direct thesis statement that's specific. Okay. So, um, let's, uh, Let's write a good thesis statement. So again, we have all of the information now necessary to answer this question. Okay. Now this question is asking uh, for your personal opinion. Do you agree or disagree? So what do you think? So it is a first person essay. All right. Okay, Debarak says citizens will tend to rely heavily on free funding from their governments in which otherwise is critical industries for investments will suffer. Uh, Debarak, that's really off topic and you're using the future participle will, which you should not do. Um, just think about this, Debarak. If I read your thesis statement, do I have an idea about your uh, topic? your controlling idea. Do I have an idea about the, the direction of your essay? When I read that, Debrock, I have no idea what you're writing about, okay? So you have to really rethink it, okay? Uh, Rajveer says, I completely agree that nations should invest money to fund adult literacy programs as it benefits both the individual and society. That is a band nine uh, thesis statement, okay? That would be the exact thesis statement, pretty much verbatim, that I would write as well. So you're looking for a band nine thesis statement, Rajvir has it. So I completely agree that 
uh, nations should fund adult literacy uh, programs uh, as it benefits as these benefit both the individuals and society yeah okay so very clear it's very clear what we're talking about uh, funding adult literacy programs it's very clear what the controlling ideas I agree with this why because it benefits individuals and society I can tell right away that we have a body paragraph coming up which will focus on benefiting the individual and we will have another body paragraph that will focus on benefiting society there's going to be very good interlinking very strong cohesion between these ideas and that will make uh, a great essay okay uh, Pavan says Rajveer is our second teacher yeah Rajveer is doing a fantastic job he's been in these classes a long time and he's really been practicing a lot and developing so um, okay D Brock says that was a response to what are the deficits not to uh, teach okay yeah thanks D Brock for clearing that up all right um, yeah, so uh, that could be allocated elsewhere. Yeah, okay, D. Barak, sure. Yeah, all right. Okay, that's good because you had me worried, so I'm glad you cleared that up. All right, Sammy says, I strongly agree with the statement that authorities should allocate funds to um, adult literacy programs. If you simply say, Sammy, that they should allocate funds to illiterate adults, it's uh, indirect, we're like, okay, but what do you mean? Like help them in poverty, give them food, help them in other ways, right? So to uh, literacy programs, so to educate literacy. And don't have a period, Sammy, because should join sentences. So because it not only benefits individuals, but also society and the development of the country. Okay, Devon says, I fully support the idea of providing funding for educating illiterate adults as it's beneficial for the person and the community. Okay, Devon, good. Just near the end there, for the person and the community. Okay, so good. That's your thesis statement. Now you're... Um now you're going to write your introductory paragraph. And your introductory paragraph needs your hook plus background plus thesis. Okay, so we already have our thesis statement. We need to create a hook that is simple. It introduces the topic. We need a little bit about the background. Okay, and for your hook and your background, use this information that we have from the planning, from the topic onwards, okay? Uh, this time, I'm not going to write the rest of the introduction for you. I want to give that to you for homework, and then we'll look at it at the start of class tomorrow. I will also finish the introduction after the class in my own time, and then uh, we'll do a little bit of comparison. So tomorrow, we will finish this essay. Now that we have all the ideas and all the planning, the essay will be nice and smooth. We just have to put it together. It's basically a recipe at this point. So hook, background, thesis, body paragraph one with topic, explanation, example, connection. Okay, body paragraph two. So now we're just putting it together like a recipe. All right. So finish the introduction. That's your homework. And then tomorrow we're going to put the whole essay together. Okay. All right, um, so planning is the key. That is the emphasis of today's lesson. And uh, don't go too far because in 30 minutes, I will host another class where we will do a reading passage together. Everybody will be able to join in on that chat. Okay, so that will be a reading class coming up shortly in 30 minutes. For everybody watching, uh, make sure to visit our website, aehelp.com for academic IELTS and gialtshelp.com for general IELTS. We have lots of uh, practice exams, videos, interactive courses, 
Again, we're world leaders when it comes to IELTS test preparation, so you're in good hands with us. Uh, I'm Adrian, signing out from Victoria for now, and hopefully I'll catch you back here in half an hour. All right, bye.